James Porter, uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. You all set? Yeah, he is. Uh, we're going to do the roll call. Um, Don here, Justin here, Owen here, Nancy here, AJ here. Um, 100% attendance, plus we have our council liaison, Jeff Weeks. Um, I would ask for a motion to approve today's agenda. I'd like to make um, can I make an amendment? Can someone to um, an amendment? We, I would like to make somebody approve today's agenda with a modification of removing line item B from the new business. And adding a discussion for the Abu Jamali. So replacing B with discussion on baseball with Molly. <clears throat> okay. I will entertain a motion for those uh, amendments to the uh, agenda. I move we, we approve today's agenda with changing item B on new business to add discussion on Hoblo tomorrow. Is there a second? I'll say. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed, say nay. Passes. Um, Tourism Director Report, Greg Ralph. Okay. I'm now officially, I think, five months in the job. It's been fun. And we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us. As you know, we've had some changes with our retainer of Christofferson Associates. That agreement is over. It's been terminated. And I have written a new RFP that's been proposed that's out for approval. You guys have it now. Village Kids will have it for their discussion and approval at their meeting. The RFP that I put together is a lot more in depth than anything I've seen the village put out prior. In terms of this, I took information that I borrowed online from the city of Santa Fe and Red River were primarily the templates for this. Their RFP um, are very extensive past muster with the state with the tourism office and everybody else. Did we all get a copy of it? I don't, I don't have one. Where'd you get yours? Oh, I, it was, I thought it was the largest text that I got in for this. I mean, I, I can make a copy. If you all can just make a copy before the end so we could all have one. Yeah, I'll make sure you get one. I'll make sure you get one electronically as well. Awesome, go ahead, um, sorry. That's all right. I apologize that you didn't have them in advance. The it's a lot more extensive, has a rating system, has timing, has where we're going to advertise the RFP. I'm putting out a lot more places, Tyler's News, um, Albuquerque Journal, Santa Fe, New Mexican, Pueblo Chief, then Colorado Springs Gazette, casting a little broader net. So is this an RFP that's going to be used by the village or just us? It will be used by the village for retaining an agency, a marketing agency, to provide the services for lodgers tax advertising and marketing roles. So that's what it that's what it's for. It's strictly for what we're doing um, to replace the agency we have. The we have it's um a lot more work comes back to us now without that agency help. We were this close from getting the website launched with all the lodging information on there. I'm looking for clarification as to where that stands right now with um, the attorneys that are involved in the lawsuit. We're looking for opinions on whether we get that, we paid for part of it, how this works, how things settle out. 
and I don't have the answers on how what the timing on that is. I'm taking a lot of the roles that the agency has done and moving them back to us doing them with staff in house, social media, website updates, um, those kind of things, email campaigns, the basic marketing things that we need to do. My concern is we we've been doing good. We ramped up beginning of summer. We've had great success at our events. We're seeing occupancy increases and so forth. And I don't want to lose that momentum because of this hiccup. I want to try to keep things going as much as possible. It's going to be a challenge, but we're not going to drop the ball and just stop working because of legal challenges. So we're moving forward with all that and keeping things on track as much as we can. Um, just you one have, quick item on that. On the receipt of proposals, uh -huh. just the dates, just to get based on that. What do you have? Uh, no. I'd like to change that. All right, I'll get that. That's, that should have been. You may have an older version. I'll check. I'll make sure you guys have the latest version with all the corrections in there. We have made some additions to staff, hired a couple new people. We're anticipating that we move to our new visitor center um, in Frontier Plaza in the next couple of months. We've been trying to do it by August 1. I don't know if that's a reasonable time frame, but we're doing as fast as possible. Hired another visitor center attendant so we can keep the place open seven days a week with good hours that the visitors are here. And I've also hired a person with events and marketing background. Brandon Prather, I worked with him at the resort. He'll be up for approval by Village Council at their meeting tomorrow. Um, no, at their meeting at the end of the month, they'll approve his employment. But he's got a lot of the skills we need in house. He's got a lot of, he can help us with events, build those things out. He can help with social media, email marketing, and those kind of things. What's his name? Brandon Prather. P R I T A G R. Uh huh. Um, and, and in light of the fact that we hired someone to do events management, my goal on events after seeing, it was kind of interesting when I started here, the first couple of things I had to do was get threw balloons over Angel Fire on the 4th of July. It was my big projects. Now if those have settled out a little bit, I can, I can get a clearer picture of the other things that need to happen. But one of my goals is to have 10 major events in this valley a year, similar to those kind of events. Um, it's going to be a challenge to get them all done, but we've got a lot of things we're working on. I've already been in discussion with some people about adding to balloons over angel fire, a fixed wing event the week before, a week after, and turn it into a 10 day aviation week type thing. The airport's in support of it. Some of the private pilots in town are in support of it. Um, so it's something that I really want to run with and try to try to blow that thing up. We can have kites and gliders Monday through Friday. Absolutely. Yeah, we go. <laughs> so we real the goal here is not with these events just to have fun and entertainment, but it's also it's actually to try to get some money back in the coffers, get our lodging tax money back. So I've got to build events that build overnight visitors is the goal. So if I can get a 10-day aviation thing, we might there might be some good lodger tax dollars that come in off of that in early June. So that's one of the goals there. We've got a couple upcoming events. Um, the one you're going to have on discussion later today, Abla Tamale. It was done before my time here by the Chamber of Commerce. And I guess it was very popular. It was very popular. 1,200 people bought tickets one year. Um, and when we get into the proposal, you'll see there's a big ad campaign component for it that could help draw a lot of traffic here for Labor Day. I'm working with Joe to add some more things to that event to try to make it a bigger draw for Labor Day weekend. But we're just trying to get something going, and it's it has some it has some good success it's from what I've been told. Two years we did it. Two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's we'll discuss that later. Another one I'm thinking about for this fall, and it's just another one of my harebrained ideas I'm trying to work through, um, is an enchanted color tour. It would be based out here last week of September, first week of October. Um, we'd go around, a great photographer at the resort, Mike Hawkins, we'd go around and get five or six landmark shots around the, the Enchanted Circle, probably post them in black and white, encouraging people to come up for the weekend, 
have a wine reception at the country club one night, a wine dinner at the country club one night, or wherever we can get participation, build a lodging package about it, send people around the tour to get their photos. It's targeting couples. Um, they, Like I said, they're the biggest demographic group that visits the state of New Mexico. We need to get, start getting more couples here in the fall. So I'm just trying to put something together and get something going that involves staying overnight, some dinners, a little bit of fun, and then going out and seeing the colors, things that people would do anyway, just trying to turn that into something. So we'll be working on that next couple of weeks, see what we can come up with. Um, another big program that I now am going to initiate, <laughs> or I'm finding out what I need to do with this job, <clears throat> I'm building a communications plan for the village. Um, we need to be able to disseminate information to people in the community about projects we have going on, village department roles and responsibilities, events, plans, and share some of our success stories. Um, the information will be compiled for a newsletter that would probably go out in utility bills in the water bill. Doesn't cost us anything, two page thing. I take it and post it socially, and I use it as the basis for content for the podcasts I'm going to be hosting. So when we get to New Visitor Center, I've got software coming. I'm building a, a podcast. I'm trying to learn how to host a podcast, something else I've never done before. This job is good for new things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in a way, we need to convey the things that are happening to our community. Talk about things we're doing. Right now, we have huge roads department projects going to start at the beginning of August. Our roads budget is eight times what it's been before. We've got good news about that. Kurt Epler's working really hard to make things smooth out there. I hope people don't drive too fast when those roads get smooth, but that'll give Jeremy and the police department something to do. So we're all working together on this project. Um, and I'm gonna that'll be the first, that'll probably be the first newsletter talking about those road projects. Now I'm gonna talk about what we're doing in in tourism and the lodgers tax segment. You know, tell people about the new logo, social channels, maybe share some of our successes we had at Balloons Over Angel Fire. That was the biggest one ever, from what I'm told. Fourth of July weekend was the best one ever, from what I'm told. But I don't know if people are just blowing smoke when they tell me this stuff. But from what I hear, these 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 events have drawn people in, and we've got some good momentum. We got to keep it going. So I'm going to start trying to communicate to the community through our newsletter, social channels, and podcasts about the things we have going on. And you know, hopefully more information, people know what's happening. Um, it waylays their fears. And I think yesterday was a great example when Kit Carson sent out the email about why internet had been going down. Everybody backed off, it was all good. Thanks for sharing that, Michael. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's that's those are the things I'm working on. Um, Amongst a million other things. Yes, Helen. Um, I was just going to ask if you could add one thing to the site is uh, can open today's open flame status mm -hmm. um, type of a thing where it can be updated potentially by the fire department. A burning? A burn. Whatever you want to phrase it as. That way you can, everyone would know where to go and look. You know, can I have an outdoor fire today? Oh, go here and take a look. Oh, it says, oh, it's uh, Red Flag Bay, no open flames. Do we want that on the village website or the tourism it, website? I think I don't know if I want to scare off tourists with that information. Well, I wouldn't have it front and center on the tourism site, but I might have it, you know, can I have a fire? Yeah. You know, that decision's made on a day to day basis, depending on wind and, and the moisture, the moisture levels. You know, yeah, we uh, can get that. Yeah, you know, check here. We don't, want, we don't want our tourists burning the place down. Yeah. Right. So maybe it well, should be for our tourists sense. or our locals. Um, a lot of times locals have pretty big fires, and so, but I would like a place to point to it. I, I'd like to know where to right. go. I mean, looking at the fire department's Facebook page that hasn't been updated. No, we can, we can, that's a good addition to the website. Like I said, and that's, that'd be good addition, you know, put in the newsletter where to look for that information. Right. So, yeah, and all of these things. But it would take somebody updating it. 
So that's the only hard part is if you don't have a responsible party that has Valerie on Witt. their back that they have to Valerie go Witt. You yeah. met her? Yeah. She does everything. So we have 50, so we can get it done. That was it. What did I do to you got? I know there's something. That was huge. I've always said that. So that was a good one. Okay. <laughs> Events, I'll, I'll scramble. So do you want it on both? Brainstorm, for sure. Yeah. 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 It's a yoga retreat. Okay. Yoga and wellness yeah. yeah. retreat. There's a lot of things we, we need to do. I, I need to build a winter carnival for MLK weekend. Yeah. MLK weekend is a three day weekend that this valley does not get overwhelmed. This year, as you'll see from the holiday schedule I distributed, it falls further back after Christmas. So it's not like two years ago, Christmas break ended on the 10th and Martin Luther King was the 17th. It's not a big enough gap for them to, to come back. So but now we have a bigger gap. What can we do to turn winter into something big? You know, not just on the mountain. You know, that's a big part of most of the activities up there. Well, what else do we have that we can do? A snowshoeing race. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. I need to bring in a trail running race. I need to, yeah. there's a lot of things. We have, we have the amenities. We have the venues. We just need someone to get to work. So I got some help. I love it. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Asked to watch too. What? I talked to the resort about their cameras, if they could put it on, if maybe they could share those cameras. We could have the Aspen watch that oh, people could see, you know, oh, they're starting to turn. Because <clears throat> those couples, they can make a call pretty quickly. Yeah. Couples, couples don't need leave time to travel. Right. It's not a holiday time. It's spur of the moment travel. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do with this. And well, maybe it's maybe it's an enchanted color tour and it goes long. That's the same weekend that we have the studio art tour. I know we I talked to Joel about it. We do that so because we want of to the put color. them together. I know. Well, well that's what I was saying. Talk to Joel about it. That that would be a great little, yeah. yeah. Yeah, then you're bringing up then you have more to do. Exactly. You can and go it's see two colors. colors. You can go see the galleries. And, and, and we got... could be getting the information of, oh, I found this color. You yeah. know, I mean, it could be yeah. interactive. Thing, so. Yeah. And then we take those photos that they submit and basically judge them really informally and award a prize to someone, you know, like a free trip up here or something like yeah. that. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Joe, Joe mentioned that. Yeah. Because that's <laughs> it's getting yeah. that big. Too. Yeah. Anytime we can take, Little events that we have already going on, and bundle them together, and make it sound make it sound bigger. That we can go out and maybe throw a lodging offer behind it. Now, now it's working. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else on a new business? That's, that's my job. That's oh that's right. Sorry, I'm overstepping my bounds. All right, now we're gonna move on to new business. Uh they have event and recap. Event recap. Oh, back to event recap. Um I've learned a lot in our events. We've made some mistakes. I need more pot porta potties in the park, a little more traffic control. If I'm going to blow up balloons over Angel Fire next year and turn it into something, we're already working with the resort to get the parking lot across the street where they used to do the event. We'll go in there as a village and mow it, and try to fill some of the holes and open it up for parking, have traffic control. So we're already working with the police department <clears throat> fire on the things we need to do to make these events sustainable and safe. Because at the, on the airport tarmac, on Saturday, we probably had 3,000 people in the airport and maybe 1,000 milling around, some at the park and so forth. When you get to critical mass, you're going to have incidents. You get 5,000 people anywhere, someone's going to have a medical incident and we're going to have to be able to deal with it. So police, fire, public works, are, we're really working closely together so we can build a program so we can handle these multi-day big events in a reasonable fashion. Balloons, um, the pilots were as happy as can be. They said it was one of the best years ever. I need vendors out there. I need 
sponsorship sales. We need to get more involved with the community. But my new, one of my new visitor center attendees that you all know, who used to run the visitor center before, will be a great addition and help in that area. So I can't tell you who, um, but I can hint. <laughs> um, so, and so we learned a lot there. We had great attendance, lodging numbers were up. The, the resort was for that Father's Day weekend, the previous year they were, the lodge was 25% occupancy. That weekend they were 70% occupancy. So we saw some gains. I think you saw a bump in occupancy as well. Fourth of July, the resort was flat on business. In fact, July was down from what it was the year before. They had a lot of walk-in business. They had a bunch of walk-in business and it made their July 4th weekend, it pulled them back out of it. What I was more than happy to point out to Aaron at the resort was that it was our marketing efforts in the village that got those walk-ins going. If it would have been the resort's marketing efforts, they would have clicked and booked online and had it done in advance. Mm -hmm. We're driving the walk-in business the last minute people. So I try to take credit where we can. <laughs> um, the 4th of July was great until the lights went out. <laughs> and the drones, the drones weren't, weren't as I expected and weren't as I had seen in the, in the runs and last year's show and so forth. I was on the phone with the pilot at the, across the street. He was on the phone with the head engineer in Dallas. There was a programming glitch and not much could be done at that point in time. We've talked the drum president, the company president was on the phone at 11 o'clock that night, taking 100% responsibility um, and promising, I asked for 200 drones next year, double it up, and they said yes. I need to make good event. But some of the direction I've gotten is, let's look, if we're going to really own that drone event, let's go to that drone company now, talk to them and say, what would it cost for 400 drones, a longer show, and we'll give you another three-year agreement. So maybe we can leverage up and really establish that drone 4th of July or 5th of July, whatever day it is, as our event and really make it an Angel Fire branded thing. I think it has potential. I've made some changes already for the park. It will be on a Saturday next year. 4th of July is a Friday. So Eagle Nest will have their thing. We'll have cool summer nights in the park, five to seven, plenty of time to get to the fireworks. Saturday, we'll start everything in the park at three with the first band three to five. The second band would be six to nine. Same band we had the other night. The town looked. I have never seen so many people up and dancing in Frontier Park as I did then. So the, the year before I had a crappy band and a great drone show. <laughs> this year I had a great band and a crappy drone show. The next year I'm gonna get it right, third time, you know? So we'll get it. Um, we, we have a lot of detailed stuff. We have a debriefing meeting tomorrow with fire police and resort staff to go over all the logistical things we need to build out events and make them professional. So we're gonna take we're gonna do good events and we're gonna take pride in them. I'm always looking for third party people. If someone would come in here and say, I've got a big running event or something I'd like to host an angel fire, we'd love to work with them. So if a rodeo comes to town or anything along those lines, we're interested. We don't say no to anybody yet. That's my event update. So, and I want to thank you, Greg. I think you've done a great job. And yeah, we got value. Did you see the drone show? <laughs> you know what's funny is we watched it from our office, and I was just thinking, oh, it must be our angle. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right? That's yeah. It. yeah. And that was actually pretty happy to hear that. It was not our angle. No. <laughs> Sad for the result, though, for the village. Um, well, thank you, though. That was awesome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, item B, termination of Carisco agreement. As you know, um, the Carisco agreement has been challenged. Um, the way it was implemented. <clears throat> And the way things are categorized may not have been appropriate. I'll just say the, the 
the ethics state ethics committee is suing the village of Ain or suing three people, three individuals here in the village on behalf of the village. I think I personally think it's going to go on for quite a while. Um, there are one of the challenges here is the definition of the word advertising. Um, from what I'm told, the intent when they wrote the statute years ago was just the media purchase part of advertising. Um, that's that's an archaic definition. If that were true, we'd have blank pages and magazine, blank TV screens, and dead or on radios. The production is part of the cost of advertising, I believe. Um, that's just an opinion, and I'm not the judge hearing the case. So I think it's going to go for a while till they determine what the definition of advertising is. And it's not Webster's definition, because Webster's very clear. It's the whole process. Um, so that's that's where that stands. That agreement is terminated. We're out for our, we'll be out for RFP next week, hopefully, for us uh, looking for a new agency. I, I haven't seen that RFP yet, but I guess my concern is I really felt like we were on a good glide path. How, how long do you think from this moment where we could make a decision on a new uh, contract? So you'd be I, I asked for our, for them to be submitted by August 15th. August 15th. Yeah, yeah, it was the submittal date. So then it would take a couple, you know, it takes a couple of weeks to get through Committee. us and council and everybody. I'm trying to do it fairly rapidly. Obviously, if you could throw an RFP out there for three months, great. But we we don't have time and there's from what I can tell, there is no legal statute of how long it has to be posted. But once again, I'm not the judge. I'm just doing what other cities in New Mexico have done. Okay. I did take some language from Hawaiian RFPs and Tennessee and other places, but it's it should fit all the all the regulations for New Mexico and everything that they're looking for. Like I said, a lot more extent. Extensive than we've done before. How much of the contract did we spend? We did the the winter. We got that. Of course, we put up the white website and some of the social. We've spent about two hundred thousand dollars. We've committed on that agreement to almost three hundred thousand dollars. For example, right now, one of the things that they did was shoot pictures at Balloons Over Angel Fire for our summer photo library. Those pictures were not delivered prior to the lawsuit. I don't have those pictures. We wrote a check for that. The check has been returned. So we not, we, the agency at the same time said, if we're, we got to cut everything off. We got to cut everything off. Let's 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 try to make right by what the court is asking. We didn't have to cut off the relationship or go out for our peer doing these things right. We haven't had a judgment that told us to, but we felt it was the right thing to do in light of what was going on. Those winter assets that they shot are still. Ours? Yes. In fact, I used a great family picture from those winter assets to build an ad for the New Mexico True magazine that'll be out in November. And yeah, I was building ads yesterday. <laughs> Something I've done, but it's nice to have an agency with professional graphic people that do it. Yeah, I think the photographer was really good. I guess it would be good if we could get those balloon photos, but I don't know. Everything. There's there's some chatter between attorneys right now. Hopefully they'll figure things out and give us some direction on what we should or should not do. Okay. We're just trying to avoid any more stickiness. So is that RFP officially out? No, it has to go to village council. It'll go to them tomorrow at two for discussion and then I'll probably get it out Monday. Okay. It doesn't take six months to do it. I mean, 
Well, but can I just say one thing real yeah. quick about this this um, lawsuit is not about the definition of advertising. It started because there was not an RFP done. That's why it started. So it yes, there was the definition of procurement for this, but it was an RFP that wasn't done. So that's where it was. If if you guys ought to read it, because it's very interesting, but oh, yeah. it's because of the RFP not doing how you're supposed to do. So yeah. And the reason I broached the question is because I still have interest in a video production company. And not that I would get any sort of preferential treatment. I don't want that, but I would like to see what the RFP looks like. Of course. So that I could just see how the bidding process is back in the day when I used to bid RFPs and make sure that all the language, because one of the concerns I had with Caristo's presentation of their budget was for film or video and photos. It was like, a list of all the itineraries that was going to go on. Here's a bulk sum. And I stood up in front of council, and maybe it was this committee, but said, you guys had no recourse to, to discuss. It's like, well, how much did two cameramen cost? How much was lunch? How much was lodging? How much you needed a line item? And I'm just hoping that that kind of information is going to be in this RFP so that it can be broken down. So it's like, if there's any discrepancies, at least as a council, as a lodger's tax committee, and as council, you guys can debate those issues. The law, it does not get into those details on project by project basis. It gets into advertising and marketing services of our agents. We would include those services, and a lot of those things I would be going out for individually. If, if we end up with an agency that's strong in graphics, doesn't have a video photographer person, I'll be doing that with my own. Well, rather than tie up the budget, so when the RFP just give me a heads up where I can find that paperwork and I just, you know, and maybe my son in California would like to bid on it. Who knows? So, I mean, uh, all right. Um, is that it for the MV? So we'll move on to new business discussion of RFP for advertising services. So you pretty much covered it all. I think so. I need to get you the accurate, the actual RFPs because I don't think Jeff has the right one. Okay. So I'll get on that right after the meeting and make sure you have them this afternoon. And then, uh, is anybody else? Uh, we'll move on to new business item B discussion of Oblad Tamali. Um, uh, yeah, this event was done a few years ago by the chamber, it took a hiatus. It was a lot bigger than what the chamber expected when they started it. I think it used to be a multi-day event. Joe's thinking about taking it down to a one-day event. The thing I like about her proposal, there's a lot of media spin in there. The chamber's committed to radio ads, newspaper ads, um, even some television to promote the event. But it's a pretty strong spend level. Um, they're asking, the ask that they gave us is ten to $15,000 little bag on what they're looking for but if i can i would i would be comfortable in supporting the event because of the media that joe's whether the chamber is putting into supporting the event and we the lodgers tax committee one of our missions is to help event people with loggers tax funding or grants or whatever you want to call it to promote their events so this is a a legitimate way for us to help a champ the chamber of commerce promote their event drive more people to angel fire and hope hopefully turn labor day into a good weekend up here so that's the goal was it a um, was it a cook off? What? It, yes, okay. we had we had like four different tamale people that brought their tamale, and it was a cook off. And then they yeah. sold tamales. We had vendors. We had music. I mean, we had it the first year over here, which was great. And then they didn't let. So then the next year it was over at Frontier Park. But I mean, it was it was amazing. We had we had uh, tamale people from kind of all over the state wanting to be involved. So yeah. and they had, they had to be commercial people, you know, to to do that to sell. And then anybody could don't be into the tamale cook off. 
What, what, why didn't it go for a third year? Um, COVID, I think. No, it wasn't COVID. It was it, political. It was, it was the, oh. it was the <laughs> old <laughs> council. It was the old council that it was too good of a deal. I think so. Can we add Chicharoni? We need a Chicharoni kind of dish. Are you bring it? No. Yeah, and you're shooting for this Labor Day. Joe's already got some vendors, or the chamber already has some vendors lined up, and she's been in contact with the people that have participated in the four it before. She, they're not confident that it's going to be a two day event right out of the gate again this year, but. If they concentrate on that one day event, we get some people coming up for the weekend, buying some lodging, riding the chairlift, playing golf, whatever. Well, we need to get on that as far as advertising. Oh, yeah, right now. We can. That's why. Our places. That's why I I just got this from the chamber two days ago. That's why I asked for the amendment on the agenda so we could get it discussed and approved today. Because if we don't get moving on it, we'll be too late and we'll miss the opportunity to promote the event and it won't be successful. Uh, we've always, the community needs something on Memorial Labor yeah. Day. We haven't really had that. And so yeah. I would definitely be in support of it. And we did that. We supported Jimmy's rodeo yeah, and over up. Memorial Day. And we, I think that was successful for us. I think that was a, a good use of lodging tax dollars to help a local promoter get an event going that returned lodgers tax dollars to the community. The other question I have is how does the t-shirts work as far as spending lodgers tax money for the t-shirts? Are the t-shirts sold? Are they handed out? or Is it, is it for the advertising or t-shirts? I can stick. I don't oh. remember. I do remember we got advertised. We did T-shirts of the Oblitz money, then we had all the advertisers on that back. And this proposal, I see fifteen thousand dollars of radio ads. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm assuming if we gave ten or fifteen, we gave ten for radio ads. Yeah, yeah. yeah our money is going to go towards advertising. If you look at that budget, yeah, yeah. They're doing the. I mean, I think the chamber does a lot of that other stuff. It's they're yeah. paying for stuff. It's yeah, not, yeah. It's oh, not yeah. like they're asking. No, this yeah. is everything. No. Does it actually say we're the t-shirt? The t-shirts the the are listed the list that is an expense. Shirts. Oh, okay. I don't know how that, that works as far as apply yeah. for Lodger's tax. Yeah, I mean, I no, see. That's, no, I think that's chamber. Did oh, that's, she, oh I'm looking at this wrong. Did she Wait. give you everything? She gave me the whole, the whole. Okay. They have the, the whole. Expenditures. So the, that's not part of what they're asking for. I no. think they want the advertising, they want and then, but she's showing you everything that they're they, doing. The Chamber of Commerce sure. would okay. like ten to fifteen thousand oh. dollars, including the advertising and promotion of their. And event. this is okay. what they're going to have, but the chamber pays for them. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. Yeah. that's okay. No, no, no. Yeah, that was... Okay, and it'd be great if we had enough lead time. We get someone like Pepto Bismo to be the sponsor or something like we that. We talked to them one year. And oh, you did. did? <laughs> and I said, what's the the other Tons. one, the Pino or the? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if we get bigger, see if they could be there. Uh, well, I don't necessarily. I think we should decide on our number. Yes, yeah, you guys. So they're going to have to officially apply though to us for the for like they do for the request because it is a a form that they filled out in the past. Yeah, like that. I've got it. Oh, it's still oh okay. Out. I've got it. What did they got the form? They put a range. I can see it. She well, raised it. Ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Ten to fifteen. Chamber of Commerce. It's a big spread there. Yeah. For us, someone, someone should throw out a, a, a motion for twelve. Someone. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions? It sounds like a good event. Uh, I mean, if they're really going to be fifteen thousand dollars worth of advertising, I wouldn't mind. We can put up to fifteen. Yeah, I can. I can. You know, we work pretty closely with Joe over there. I can when she gets her media plan together. I can get details on it and so forth. Is it? And let me maybe Janice. And 
an area and you buy tickets to go into this yes, area? Yes, we have to have it closed off. Yes. Okay. And so we had tickets, so you had a gate person, and then we even had alcohol the one year. I mean, you know, an area that was roped off for the alcohol. But yeah, it's just, it's kind of like if you did Frontier Park and you, how they okay. do for right. the night, you have one entrance, you come in, and everybody's there. So where are you thinking about for this one? Frontier. Here or Frontier? Frontier. Okay. We've already, uh, um, I've got permission from the resort to host it there. And how did you sell tickets? Did you do them just at the gate or did you ahead of time? Charge admission? Yeah, we charged admission. I think it was just at the gate. Yeah. And okay. I think we might have, if you were a sponsor, you got so many tickets, you know, so we did that. But yeah. But sponsors, any time a sponsor got it, they did have tickets. And maybe we just made these little tickets. I can't remember right. exactly. But we sold stuff at the door. We had, I mean, it was just really, and all these tamale people were excited. So they invited their friends because, of course, you know. And you're going to be in charge of that? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not on the I'm not on team of board anymore, but I help. So, yeah. But, right. yeah, it's a good. Can I ask a quick question? It's, it's kind of about this kind of knot. The money that we allotted for Crisco agreement is that now the government can now pull that back? No, no, okay. not, not yet. There's okay. been no, there's been no discussion of taking back the unspent money that was reaching the two year okay. deadline. That's that what I was just asking: is are we in a hurry to get rid of that money again, or spend that money again, or? Or not is what I was asking. We want to make sure we just do things right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we didn't have to have it spent. We just had to have it committed. committed. Yeah. It was it was committed. And now so it's in sure limbo. Well, or, or which we, we can commit it again, but yeah, the intent is to do that. I don't think they would try. I was just asking that. based on anything else that we approve, or we're more likely to approve stuff based on it. We need to spend money. Faster or slower, basically, if it's going to be taken back from. Um, I just want y'all to know I put in a call to um, the municipality and through the economic development of the state because I talked to Raton because I heard there was um, somebody said that Raton's lodger's tax money was clawed back and it wasn't. I talked to the right. clerk there and the clerk told me, she said, well, maybe the reason that people were using that as a clawback is because the Colfax County had put in a thousand or two thousand or two million into their budget saying they'd already got this grant when they didn't and they had to take it off. So if y'all hear any of that, that is what happened. And I heard it from the clerk but I do have a call in because we have never heard of a clawback money from the lodger's tax for the state of New Mexico. And also, it, I mean, it's just kind of interesting that that was being used when we had COVID and they let everybody go okay because of COVID. So it's not like, okay, it's, it's not that way. And when I get a hold of this guy, I'm going to see if I can get him to give me something in writing so I can give it to you guys. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's very, it's very, you can just call. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't know. I would hesitate to, I mean, if you've already gone to necessarily bring it to their attention, but we were one of the, one of one county in the state of New Mexico that actually increased lodger's tax during COVID. Everyone else right, went right. to the dumper. So we have a lot more money than everybody else. Right. But um, and so it, it's been well past the two year on those things. But uh, back. Uh, yeah, yeah. The lodger just... tax statute does say, state statute does allow for a clawback for money that has not been spent within two years. Okay. So that would be the only concern. So I'm just saying they have not done it since pre COVID, though. But they haven't. I mean, if you and, and I'm going to see if there's ever anybody they really did do it to. So anyway, I've got calls about it. Right. So, uh, that's that's all I was thinking about. Because anything coming in front of us forward, you know, it has a more importance on it or more, you know, you're, you're, you're we're going to lose it. Yeah. So, um, anybody else? Uh, well, I would entertain a motion for funding in this event. Someone has a way they want to structure particularly. I'd like to make sure we have a specific amount. Are we saying? Yeah, set an amount. Set an amount. No, not to exceed. Set it not to exceed. 
or advertise. Well, if they ask 10 to 15, let's split the difference and I'll make a motion that we make it 12 5. Um, and, uh, you know, I assume if they, if they run it up bigger, they can come back. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those say nay. Passes. Um, oh, just one other housekeeping note. I apologize for this meeting being shifted out of our normal segment. We do have a standing invite on the village calendar now for our meeting. That's a set time. It will be the second Wednesday of the month, 10 a.m., like we're supposed to be. And we'll always have the space. We'll always have the space. Somehow, Rhodes bumped us out for a meeting. And and I got it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then they canceled the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry about that. I really appreciate you guys being so flexible and showing up. So, I, a lot. Thank you, Greg. Um, that's the end of our agenda. we're uh, premier and still doing our sandwich call and uh, they have a lot more lead time largest uh we could stay up the three side shots and so they got a little bit of pressure of always the time of it yeah as a time now so if a new sheet from your yeah, I mean, I didn't know. 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 I didn't Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I just want to go that's unknown. You know how to buy it. Same to you. Thanks, Jackie. That was a fair question. New question. You got it. If what was advertising and what wasn't advertising, you can have it right for it. Yeah. So, then, so my question is what is advertising? Yeah, so let's say Turing they don't define it. Turing Productions gets hired as a marketing company. And so we send bills for the media advertising. Who pays for their other fees, like the website, the local design? I'm saying what is, is that I don't do that's not something that can be Rogers and Kevin Rogers and Spell. You, you're saying yes. Yes, it can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. But if it if it turns out it can't, then my question is why but lawsuits, whether Rogers tax money can be spent on the lawsuits, whether Rogers can be used in RSP. Yes, that's okay. exactly what they're saying. So it's not they're not saying you shouldn't spend Rogers tax money on this. I mean, you're you saying all oh, kind of it's it's except it's except it's there was a little gray area that they, they, they were like, like you know, make sure you don't say anything about events, make sure you don't say anything about okay. So they knew that they were skating the lot. So that's you know, I mean, if you go through and read everything, it's it, it's it's really kind of sad in a way because after we had all talked about it and said this yeah, is wrong, you guys, and really especially in business, when you have somebody that you work with and yeah, you know, you try to make sure, and all the you make sure that you can make sure everybody knows. I tried to make sure it's right, and you know, just in an RFP, and then I heard that well, it would take six months, and we'd already lose our money. It's like full. I mean, I'm sorry, there was a lot of stuff on set. You're obviously passionate about it.
it. I am very different. Because there was not. I was just looking at the different budgets. Because we were told that that our RFPs had gone out and nobody else had to do another. That we didn't have to do because of the umbrella of advertising. Somehow, and once you know, we all kept trying to say this. You guys, 